And I will note that Jamie Dimon said a few years ago, he admitted to Square Envy saying that they have innovated where they have not, but currently Square has just a fraction of this market in terms of active users. So how do they get to that point to be bigger than JPM? Yeah, hey, great being on your show. Thanks again. So look, you know, it actually ties really well with everything that happened, you know, post close yesterday with a tweet from Jack. If you think about the way, if I could put myself in their head, I mean, they really want to be this sort of new age, next gen, ultimate neobank. And I think that, that the work that we've done, which was before they announced the TBD announcement, actually shows you the path to getting there from today to then, right? So the two questions here are, what is the average revenue per user that they can get long term and how many users they can get? Think about it today. They've got like 36 million users. No one would have thought that. And the reason we think it's like buying JP Morgan in 1871 is because the average revenue per user is much bigger than I think most people are thinking about. And we did this very step-by-step -step analysis of each product that they can come up with, plus times the incidence of that product actually being used, times the number of users. So we're getting to anywhere from $150 to $200 of our pool. And in terms of the number of users, we did mm -hmm. some math. There's about four to 500 million accounts in the US. So if they just get you know 15 to 20% of that, we're talking about like two to three X in terms of the total number of users that they have. So you multiply the two and you're getting numbers in the you know tens of billions of dollars of yeah, revenue for the cash app, which After is that ultimate. Year. So, so Dan, Square and Dorsey are taking this sort of Silicon Valley approach of move quickly and break things, which has worked in the past and certainly seems to be doing that when it comes to crypto, which is still largely unregulated. But there's a risk in that, too, right? I mean, we've seen regulators keep their eye on big tech and Square and financial services. Is there a scenario that you think in which this could come under pressure and scrutiny and sort of throw off that thesis? Yeah, look, I mean, there's always a risk with everything. There's risk on crypto, there's risk on Bitcoin, there's risk on regulation. I don't dismiss any of these, but I think that the portfolio of services they, they offer is so diversified that, you know, if, if one of the areas would come under scrutiny, say Bitcoin, then they still have so many other revenue opportunities, right? Like mortgages, lending, uh, buy now, pay later, et cetera, et cetera, that would make it more of a diversified investment or a diversified revenue source. So obviously there's risk, um, but, you know, it's it's a regulated space and I'm not dismissing that, but I think that that they've got a chance to become that sort of next, you know, mega neobank, which is going to get bigger than some of the existing banks today in the future. But Dan, they are so diversified and in every area that they're competing and moving into, they are up against so many different giants, both the established banks, the challenger banks, some of these bigger startups. I'm wondering, um, you know, it, it seems in your very bold call that this is like buying JP Morgan 150 years ago, if you're concerned at all about the competition they face in each of these different lanes that they're now playing in. You know, this is a very, very good question. And if the, the reason I'm not particularly concerned about this is because what Square has is something that the others don't. They have a, they built an ecosystem around the Cash App, right, which is now adding, for example, music with Tidal or Bitcoin, which is an engagement tool. And the cost of acquisition is down to like $5, which is unheard of in the industry because they've got that P2P angle because people actually use it. You know, people use it on average 15 times a month, which is a huge, it's a huge engagement by all means. And I think that ecosystem is very, very hard to replicate, right? It's kind of, you know, it's like Apple on steroids, so to say, because people use it, they transfer money to one another, they, um, they use it to, to, to shop, they use it, they're going to use it in the future to listen to music. And, you know, there's a lot of other services out there that do one or two things. There's nobody that does the whole thing. Uh, in, in, you know, a one-stop shop. And I think that's the big advantage of the cash app and the seller ecosystem. We didn't talk about that, but that's those point of sales. Uh, that those two things together make it very, very unique, very, very unique and very hard to replicate.